The archaeological site at Patanam is the first early historic settlement site identified on the southwest coast of India. Excavations by the Kerala Council for Historical Research at Patanam have revealed multiple cultural layers spanning the first millennium BC to the present. Ceramics, both local and imported, are the most abundant of finds. To help us understand this huge volume of pottery, we conducted an ethno-archaeological study of pottery production in the Patanam region. By observing the shared traditions of the workshops at Chendamangalam, Tatapali and Karumalur, we investigated site formation processes, continuity and change from the past to the present issues of stylistic and technical evolution and identity. Using the research strategy of chaîne opratoire or sequences of production, the study identified these distinct stages in pottery production, consumption and discard. Here we see the making of the matang, the traditional pot used to tap todi, the fermented coconut sap, an indigenous drink of Kerala. The pottery workshop is typically a semi-enclosed fluid space designed to encompass the entire production process. The sequence of manufacturing the mutton starts with the preparation of clay. The potter takes the clay for a batch of pots and begins to trample it, periodically adding water. This helps remove air pockets and brings the clay to the appropriate consistency. Sieved fine sand temper is worked into the clay, preventing it from adhering to the floor and allowing the potter to change the properties of the clay to suit the function. The trampled clay is then taken to the area where the second stage commences. Small quantities of clay are cut from the mass and flattened into a thattu or plate form with the aid of the anvil or idikali. Ash from the kiln is added to reduce thickness of the clay. In the next step, a previously fired pot is swiftly rotated in a bed of ash and the flattened clay is then pressed on its inverted base. Using her fingers to define and smoothen the edges, the potter ensures the clay assumes the shape of the mould. The form bowl is now dry enough to be picked up with the palm and allowed to rest in the shade for a short while. It is then dried for a few hours and brought back to the workshop.
The potter then picks up the bowl in her hand and smoothens the rims by dabbing water. It is then placed on a broken pot and another bowl is placed on top. The upper half is seated in the rim of the lower half and the joint is levelled. She makes a puncture in the pot with her thumb, widening the hole into the neck of the pot. Clay coil rolled with the flat of a palm is pressed along the neck. A wet cloth is then dipped in water and the dampened surface is worked by hand until it forms the final rim. The pot is now kept for drying for at least a few hours. After that, the potter beats the pot with a variety of wooden paddles while rotating it using her hand, knees and legs. This strengthens the walls of the pot. The choice of the paddle depends on the degree of force required, the size of the pot, and the thickness of the surface to be beaten. The pot may be dampened during this entire process. The hand anvil is smeared with ash and placed in the pot. Its position shifting to ensure the shape of the pot is not lost during the paddle beating. Oftentimes, with this constant beating, a tear or two appears on the pot. The potter then smears the area with clay to mend the tear and beats that area until the clay is uniform. <laughs> Once the shaping process is completed, the pots are allowed to sun dry. The drying process also requires constant vigil. The pots are inverted time and again so as to dry evenly. Once dry, the pots are lined before the kiln in preparation for loading. The typical kiln is updraft and has two stoke holes fueled by wood and coconut fibre. Depending on their size and form, the various pottery products are stacked in tiers, interspersed with broken shirts and wood. The kiln is then covered with paddy stalks and mud. The colour of the pottery varies depending on how the air in the kiln is controlled. The preparation of the kiln for firing is a highly technical process as any miscalculation would lead to broken or damaged pots and consequent financial losses. The firing process takes about two days. The ready pots may then be removed from the kiln and stored in a shed until they are taken to the market for sale. Most stalls selling local earthenware offer a variety of pot forms intended for various uses such as total tapping, rituals, water storage or cooking. The consumer often selects the pot by knocking on its surface. If the pot produces a melodious tone, it indicates that it has been well fired and is durable. The pots are valued for the distinctive flavour they give and are usually washed and reused. 
The exceptions to this pattern of usage are the pots purchased for festivals and rituals. For archaeologists, the end product of the life cycle of a pot are mostly broken shards. Ethnoarchaeology provides the perfect platform to discuss these shirts with traditional potters who give insight into their manufacture and use. The entire team wishes to thank the potters of Patanam region in Kerala for making the study from the present to the distant past a possibility.